Thanks for joining me here again at But Now Ministry, and today we're going to talk about part 15 of what do you anticipate being obstacles or dangers that would imperil your ministry. Now, as we have gone through 14 parts, we've discussed the importance in believing your King James Bible, the 1769, is indeed God's perfectly preserved word without error. We believe that the church, the body of Christ, does not start on a Jewish feast day in Acts 2. It starts when Saul of Tarsus becomes the Apostle Paul, the new creature in Acts chapter 9, and he's given by the Lord Jesus Christ, by revelation, Galatians 1.11, the revelation of the mystery, Romans 16.25, Colossians 1.25 and 26, and Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 through 10, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God. Now, again, if you do not have a 1769 Bible, and you're using some new translation that was produced within the last hundred years, let's say, okay, you will not know what the dispensation of the grace of God is, you will not know what the revelation of the mystery is, and you will not have, probably, depending on how long you've been in church, you will never, ever hear about the fellowship of the mystery that all men have to see it. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9. And this station is dedicated to all men seeing what is the fellowship of the mystery. Okay? And when you come down to actually talking to them about the gospel, the grace of God, and telling them that no one in the red letters believed the death, burial, and resurrection. They knew not the scriptures. They did not know what Jesus Christ was saying in the red letters. Um, you're going to have a fight. You'll have a fight with most people that have been churched and not taught to believe their Bible. Okay, Most people who are churched have been churched to not believe their Bible. Instead, they believe the scholarship. They believe there's the original Greek, the original Hebrew, which there's no such thing on the face of the planet. They believe the attacks that go against the King James Bible. They believe the attacks that go against dispensationalism rather than studying them out to show themselves approved, 2 Timothy 2.15. And when it comes to right division, when it comes to telling them the gospel, the grace of God is only found in Paul's writings, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again on the third day. Okay, If you trust Christ dying for your sins, I actually had one gentleman ask me if he had to have somebody preach to him to actually believe the gospel. Does somebody have to tell him? No, you have to study your Bible and believe the gospel. If you believe, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again on the third day, you're saved. And Ephesians 1, 13 tells us exactly how that function works. In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Okay? You heard the word of truth. Read your Bible out loud. You heard it. Now you're saved by the gospel, the grace of God. And you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So, no, you don't have to have somebody preaching it to you. It could be on the, on the bumper sticker on the back of a car. You read it, you trust it, you believe it, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You are saved by God's grace. And because you're saved, you're accepted in the Beloved, Ephesians 1.6. You're saved until the day of redemption. You're seated in heavenly places, Ephesians 1.6. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, Ephesians 1.13. You have peace with God, Romans 5.1. And God is not counting any sin, any trespasses against us today, 2 Corinthians 5.16-21. Um, Colossians Chapter 2, verse 14, and Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. So, and I'm going to go to those verses because I just want to make sure I'm giving you the right verses. Colossians chapter 2, 13 says... And these are important verses. Notice they're in Paul's writings. And 
Colossians chapter 2.13 says, And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Okay? All. Not some, not a little, not a few. All. Okay? And Ephesians 1.7 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Okay, you have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Okay, don't listen to John MacArthur who tells you that the blood has no saving properties in his New King James translation in the footnotes on Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. Okay, the guy knows no Bible, and how do I know that? Because he doesn't have one in his hand. It's not hard. And so he's going to be an enemy of the gospel, the grace of God. He traffics in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John like most places. And he doesn't tell you that in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, no one knew nor understand the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? And by the way, John 3.16 does not include the resurrection. Acts chapter 2, verse 38 does not include the resurrection. Isaiah 53 does not include the resurrection, okay? It was kept secret. And when you read Acts chapter 17, weren't the scribes and the Pharisees wondering what strange new doctrine Paul was preaching? He was preaching Jesus Christ and the resurrection. Why would that be strange new doctrine if Peter, James, and John knew it? because they didn't know it. They didn't understand it. Didn't Peter try to prevent the cross when they went to take the Lord away? Didn't he cut off someone's ear? You know, these are things that you have to believe. You have to, you know, one pastor said, the Bible's easy to understand. It's just hard to believe. Do you believe you're a new creature? Or do you think you're a disciple? Do you believe you're a tree? Or do you think you're a new creature? Do you believe you're an ambassador? Or is it a disciple? Do you believe that Christ is your head? Or is he your shepherd and you're a sheep? Do you believe that you're part of the body and Christ is your head? Or do you believe you're a sheep and he's your shepherd? Because it's two different things. It's two different programs going on in your Bible. That's why you have to rightly divide the word of truth. And that's what we're talking about today. Right division. So number three, as we look at prophecy and mystery... Were the mysteries revealed before the death of Christ? And we kind of just talked about that, right? Matthew 13, 11. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. And then Colossians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. We know Matthew 13 is before Jesus Christ dies on the cross. Okay? In Matthew, he doesn't die on the cross until Matthew chapter 27. Okay, so that's 14 chapters before the Lord Jesus Christ dies on the cross. And on the authority of Hebrews 9, 15 through 17, that means it's still Old Testament. And we know that Jesus, Romans 15, verse 6, is a minister to the circumcision. And we know that he came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, Matthew 15. And in John chapter 1, he came for his own. Okay, so clearly, Matthew 13 is prophetic doctrine for Israel from the Lord Jesus Christ to them, okay? And so, don't get that confused with Paul's writings, because Paul was not saved back there in Matthew. He doesn't get saved till Acts chapter 9, which is after Pentecost, which is after Israel rejects the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 8. And so, he writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and 8, the very thing that we know now, but they didn't know back then, Right? But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. So, so much for everyone looking forward to the cross and everyone in the New Testament looking back at the cross because Colossians chapter, or 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 8 says, which none of the princes of this world knew, none, Okay, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They did not know. 
And like I said, Peter tried to prevent it, and the disciples knew not what Jesus Christ was talking about, and they were afraid to ask. When it came to his death, burial, and resurrection. What was prepared from and before the world began? Matthew 25, 34. Then shall the king say unto them, and again, Matthew 25 is before Jesus Christ dies on the cross. He doesn't die on the cross until Matthew chapter 27. So this, again, is Old Testament doctrine for Israel on the authority of Hebrews 9, 15 through 17. And again, we know who Jesus is a minister to. He's a minister to the circumcision, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And we know he came for his own, right? And so then shall the king say unto them on the on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And then we have in the dispensation of grace, according to the revelation of the mystery, Romans 16, 25, Ephesians chapter 3, according to our apostle, the apostle Paul, what does he tell us? For the church, the body of Christ. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Before. Notice that. Before. The foundation of the world and Israel's prophetic program was from the foundation of the world so it's that plan B okay the revelation of the mystery is not plan B and prof the prophecy programs plan a they were both in place one was before the foundation of the world and one was from the foundation of the world okay and notice that verse. It's according as he hath chosen us in him. Okay? How does he choose us in him today in the dispensation of the grace of God? It's if you trust the death, burial, and resurrection. Then you are placed in him. Okay? Then you are placed in him. And that's how it works today. If you do not trust the death, burial, and resurrection, death, burial, and resurrection. What does Romans 5.10 say? Romans 5.10 says, For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So, if you are not trusting in the death of the Lord Jesus Christ as payment for your sin, you are not reconciled, and you are not saved by his life. You are then not placed in his body. And Ephesians 1.4 tells us that the body of Christ was before the foundation of the world. And Israel's program was from the foundation of the world. Thanks again for listening. Email me with any doctrinal questions. Check out my website at preachingthegospelthatsaves.com and as we continue to go through rightly dividing the word of truth, we are going to look at next time our service to God and what that looks like according to Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery. Thanks again for listening.